Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Cyborg Spider-Woman from Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. Of course, as you can see here on the box, plastic-free pack, or, yeah, plastic-free packaging, no window. Can't see the figure inside, which I'm disappointed about, but hey, they're getting rid of it now, so we're coming to an end. And as you can see from the top here, I did find this in store at... What is it? 70 bucks, I think it was. Something like that. I'm interested to see if this figure is worth it. And I'm kind of making this video so you guys can know as well. But just looking at the packaging, you got a picture of the figure on the front. Some pretty nice artwork on the side here. Another image of the figure on the back showing it to be almost 8 inches tall. The photo that all the Spider-Verse figures have on. Their card backs, anyway. Spider-Verse logo at the top. Nothing else on the bottom. So let's open up this figure and get a closer look. So here we have the Cyborg Spider-Woman out of her packaging. And I have to say, I don't really know what to think about this figure. Because, like, sculpt-wise, it's amazing. But when it comes to paint applications and all that kind of stuff, as you'll see here in a minute or two, feels like they got kind of lazy. Like, this is one of those figures, you know, it's not a Howard the Duck where it's god-awful. You can tell they tried, but maybe they needed more time? I don't know. And it's not, and I know mine isn't a fluke because it's missing paint in all the same spots that everyone else's is. So, I don't know. But quickly, just going to take a look at articulation here. Just get it out of the way. Spiral Woman can look up about that. Oh, it's too close to the camera. Can look up about that high. Can look down about that far. Arm goes out to the side like that. And the cannon doesn't really move out very far at all. The arm does have a bicep swivel, and it is kind of stiff, I have to admit. It's supposed to have a double jointed elbow, but I'm trying not to crush the spikes on her shoulder there. So if you see me struggling, that is why. So it bends about that far. It's pinless, which is nice. At 70 bucks, I expect pinless. This arm does a full rotation out back here, which... Out back. Just full 360 rotation. As this arm can. Or no it can't. <laughs> Catches on the shoulder pad there. Again goes out that far. It does actually turn here. And at the bottom here as you can see. But that's all the arm can do. I, I kind of thought when I saw this here. That this would be a joint. So you could just have some. You know, barely have motion, but that way you still get some. No, it's it's just solid plastic. Leg kicks up about yay high. Does have a good old thigh cut that can turn all the way around. But is kind of difficult because of this pouch on the side here. Which I... So it's on the cut, like the majority of it's on this side. So I feel like they could just made a little indentation there and then connected it up here so that way you can turn past the back here. Because if you have her standing up, it just gets caught on the butt and can't turn any further. Same on this side as well, kicks up about yay high. Just the full 360 turn at the thigh cut, double jointed knee. But it is a little stiff. Same on this leg as well. Feet kick out about that far. Kick up about that high. Again, it's for both legs. And both of them have ankle pivot. So, when I was talking about the paint job having issues. Here's what I mean. It mainly is on the feet here. It's so like you'll have the nice painted um, barbed wire, I guess, and then the paint just stops. Like it just abruptly stops somewhere where it randomly starts. I don't know. 
They didn't paint up here. This leg is barely painted outside of the front. And even then, you have issues there. Foot's not painted very well. Like, it, it's all kinds of trouble. And then up here, and on the back of the arm, like, they only painted the front of this, is what I'm noticing. So it would look nice at certain angles. Because, like, no paint here, no paint here. Nothing there. Nothing on the... Ouch. Nothing here, right? My camera, just my phone won't focus. Yeah, nothing up there, which is really sad to see. Nothing here, but if you get to the front, it's all painted and looking pretty. So I, I would love to know what the hell happened there, because that really makes me mad that you're charging 70 bucks for an okay figure, but then it brings it down when you don't paint it properly. Uh, let me just quickly pop off the head so we can get a nice look at the head sculpt, because this is probably the best part of it. You know, you get the nice... I don't know, I think like Mad Max with the mask here. It's kind of a gas mask kind of thing. You got the robotic eye, which does look nice. And then the, again, it just looks like, um, I can't think of the word for it. For like what you would call this eye, but it looks armored. And like it still stands out as Spider-Man. I could look at this head and I would still think semi-Spider-Man, you know. Still, it can. my point is it can pull off the look. So if I just pop it back on here, of course, the spider emblem itself is made of a chain that wraps all the way around the figure and actually covers up the spider logo on her back, but you can see that it is there. And honestly, I think if this figure didn't look so cyberpunk-like, or not cyberpunk, I don't want to say that, but... Looks how it does, like with the shoulder and stuff. It could make for a really nice Spider Hulk base. You know what I mean? The uh, old Toy Biz one. I couldn't think of the company for whatever reason. But the Toy Biz Spider Hulk. It would make for a nice custom to go with that. Which also, Hasbro loves making their Hulks that aren't just the classic one. So, that would be a nice one to see redone. Just overall, I'm really disappointed with the paint here. It That really bums me out a lot. Because that kind of thing shouldn't be happening when you're spending 70 bucks. Because once you add tax, and if you order this online, you're going to be spending over $80 on shipping, on tax, all that stuff. And it's just not worth it. You know what I mean? It's absolute bull, bull crap. Just, I don't know why you would... Stop painting. It's made to look good from, like, this specific angle. And then nothing else. At least that's what it seems like to me. And I know maybe you're thinking... The movie also hasn't come out yet. It's it's May, so... Maybe not out till what, mid-June? So we have all that problem, and it just, it just bugs me so much that they went... Like, they put so much effort into the sculpt... Oh, yeah, I about forgot. There's a diaphragm joint in here that allows for a full three-six day turn, like so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just have a lot of problems with the figure. There's the widest stance you're going to get. Oh, wait a second. What's the widest you can get on standing with this figure? Right there, that is the widest you can get, so that's pretty nice, actually. Again, Sculpt is amazing on this figure. It is... If they put this level of Sculpt into all of their figures, we would have nothing but the best toy line, especially at their prices. Like, it would make $25 worth it every time. But they don't. They, put, they don't put that much into it every time. It's only with the movie figures, you know what I mean? I can't... <laughs> hashtag it. Whenever I need a comic figure... Oh, here it is. I had the Cyborg Spider-Man so we could do a height comparison. But I'm just going to pull him here. Like, could you imagine on this figure if they put the kind of sculpting work they did on this one in? 
you know how nice that would be and while we're at it here you can see the height difference it's pretty big let me just fully get her in the frame like so put him right next to her there we are it's looking pretty nice and I have to say, this figure could have made, like, my top 15 Marvel Legends. And, you know, maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe I'll really love the character or something, and it makes a list. But with the paint problems, I just don't think it could. And, again, I don't know if I'll do top 15. It's definitely not the worst, because the sculpt is so amazing. But it's also not the best. I don't know. It's... It's very mid-figure, I guess. I, I don't know how else to really describe it, but let's quickly get through the height and stuff. I'm already rambling for 10 minutes here, and I don't want to run this too long for you guys, so... Alright, so Cyborg Spider-Woman coming in at her tallest possible height is actually like 8 inches tall. So, or at least using my tape measure, it's 8 inches tall instead of 7.9. Which is nice to see, um, getting Spider-Woman next to Miles. Here we have, like that, and then Peter B, which I just got done taking as a thumbnail for that video, which you should go check out. Same with Miles and The Spot. Let me just get him stood up like so. There he is. There's some nice height comparisons. As you can see, she towers on the shelf. The nice thing I can say about this figure is it will stand out on a shelf. If you just have a bunch of Spider-Man, it's going to stand out for how big and how different it looks, which is really, really nice. And then, of course, we have the spot, and I feel like I can put him in front because it's, it's still staggering on how tall she is compared to the rest of them. So, with all that being said... I will also do, because I just realized I have her sitting nearby, the comic Gwen Stacy from the Into the Spider-Verse 2 pack that they did back in 2018. Again, really towers. This is more of a comic one now. So with all that being said, thank you for watching. Please, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. We are almost at 100 subscribers, and I cannot wait to reach that goal. So if you would hit the button. I will be forever grateful, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.